We start with the latest violence targeting Turkish security forces. There's been a rocket attack on police officers in the southeast. We understand that four were injured. 14 police officers killed, though, in a bomb attack in the east. Both attacks blamed on the Kurdistan Workers' Party, which killed 16 soldiers on Sunday in the mainly Kurdish southeast. That was the deadliest attack on Turkish security forces since a ceasefire collapsed in July. Now, the government is vowing to wipe out the PKK. There was a massive wave of airstrikes against PKK positions in Iraq overnight. And now the army has started what's described as a short-term ground incursion in northern Iraq. Jasper Mortimer has more from Ankara. And that ground incursion is a first uh, since this fighting began on July the 20th. We've had airstrikes before, um, but we haven't had actual ground force incursions into neighboring states. And I think it shows that the government needs to show that it's doing all it can against the PKK. With the 16 killed on Sunday, uh, also today, um, PKK shot dead a policeman in his car in Tunjali province. And in northern Iraq, P the PKK released 20 officers that they had kidnapped in two separate raids during the past week. The PKK are clearly intending to send a signal there, uh, uh, as, as if they're not all bad. They are capable of releasing people that they've kidnapped. But the country is increasingly polarized. Um, Anti-PKK mobs have attacked officers of the pro-Kurdish uh, political party, the HDP, um, in many towns across the country overnight. Um, again, today, an anti-PKK mob corralled uh, a group of Kurdish workers on a construction site in Konya, um, preventing them from leaving the site. And then another anti-PKK march um, last night went through a Kurdish district outside uh, Ankara. Uh, Kurds in that district threw stones at the marchers, and it developed into a riot. You know, uh, tension is rising in this country, and it's, um, it really is quite dangerous. And these tensions rising as uh, the country prepares for snap elections at the beginning of November. What impact do you think uh, the violence is going to have on the poll? Yes, this is the question that everybody is, uh, is asking. And uh, the short answer is we don't yet know. Um, initially, it looked as if... Um, uh, a large part of the electorate would blame the government uh, for the collapse of the peace process. You know, uh, this PKK fight insurgency was revived when two days after the bombing of July the 20th, uh, the PKK uh, assassinated two policemen uh, in, in their home. Uh, and um, the government replied to, to that with wave after wave of airstrikes. Now, that was seen as a disproportionate reply. And then the PKK said, right, well, if, uh, with all these airstrikes, uh, the ceasefire is over. Um, and uh, they let loose their forces of war. And now we have, uh, you know, what's, what, what's going on. But uh, with, uh, you know, the polarization I was talking to, uh, talking about just now, and uh, the uh, mobs attacking officers of the pro-Kurdish pro party, we might very well see a large part of the population uh, rallying behind the government, you know, closing ranks with the government, whereas others um, might, uh, you know, continue to blame the government for uh, the collapse of the peace process.